Laughing Vikings Live. High vibe chats with actors, comedians, and creators, plus stand-up comedy, sketch comedy, and most importantly, you. That's right. Join us every Monday for new episodes, and you can be a part of the show on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and Twitch. Ask questions and interact in the comments, and make sure to share this with your actor, comedian, and creator friends so they can be a part of the show, too. Can't make a live show? No problem. You can catch up on your favorite podcast platform and visit laughingvikings.com to find out how you can join the cast and crew. All right, it's time for today's show. Buckle up and make sure you stick around to the end because we have a special surprise for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Laughing Vikings Live. Happy Monday Fun Day. Let's go. Hello, everybody. Here we are. We're back at it again. Monday Fun Day, episode 4 7. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, we're getting up there. We're almost to the big 5 0. We're going to have to have a a golden anniversary in in three weeks yeah we'll have to get a cake or something yeah right yeah or we should, maybe we should just have a cake every episode i'd love that cake we should do cake. that <laughs> i don't know that's a little too much cake might have to be a healthy cake we'll make like protein bar cake or something is that a carrot thing? cake carrot right, cake is there healthy, such a thing right? as healthy cake i don't know if there is a thing as healthy cake but i think we need to uh Start a cake. I know my mom makes a gluten free chocolate cake that right. she loves. Well, there you go. There Mrs. you go. Mrs. BK Broiler, I am requesting for the Laughing Vikings podcast a gluten free chocolate cake. Okay. Is she watching right now? Uh, maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. Nice. Well, welcome, everyone. <laughs> welcome to the show. We got a great show. We got an incredible guest. Uh, we're going to bring her on shortly, but first, uh, let's talk about a few things on the weekend. Mm -hmm. We had some fantastic shows here in Comedy Alley on Thursday night. We had the first Ladies' Night of Laughter hosted by Zabrina Douglas, and uh, we had Keisha Brownie. Uh, who else do we have on that show? Um, Keisha Brownie, um, Brandon Ash, mm -hmm. uh, Martha Chavez, and uh, Hodo Hersey. Uh, and it was great. It was fantastic. New new vibe in the uh, in the alley here. And the next one of those is going to be September sixteenth, Thursday, September sixteenth. Sabrina is going to host one of those monthly female comedians, some of the country's best, and also LGBTQ two S friendly comics. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you can hit that up. And then we had a Friday show and a Saturday show. Um, Friday was, or sorry, Friday was, Friday was really fun, but there wasn't really an audience. So it was one of those shows that's mostly comedians, which a lot of people do not like. Um, but we just plowed forward to, with it. So it was, uh, one of those shows where it was the show must go on. But the cool thing is we've got the live stream audience. So we were still able to have fun with the live stream and everyone was still able to get some stage time. Yeah. And Saturday night was, um, Saturday night was really cool. I got to keep staying over to the side here. Uh, Saturday night was very cool because I had uh, some friends in the audience, Ray and Brian Kennington, who are both actors. And Brian is also a writer and getting some of his, uh, he's got two feature films sort of in development slash their, their scouting locations and sort of putting the production schedule together. So that was neat. Uh, and then what else we had, um, there was a couple in the audience. It's like there's always somebody celebrating either a birthday or an anniversary, which is always cool. So it was it was just another one of those magic special nights on Saturday, which is kind of the vibe we're trying to create. Mm -hmm. uh, and then show show the uh, the picture of the front here. We upgraded our our uh, aesthetics. Boom! There we are <laughs> doing a little barking. We roll out the red carpet for you. So every Friday and Saturday we have shows at 9 p.m. And then occasionally we have the odd special show like ladies night. Um, but we put out that uh, red carpet so that people, when they're walking by, they're like, what is happening in this place? And uh, it was great. We actually got several new people coming to the show and discovering us along Queen Street, just right at Queen and Broadview. If mm -hmm. you're in the Riverside area, look for the red carpet, look for the velvet rope and uh, look for the pug out front. Luna actually was working the door by herself a little bit. There was a couple of times, where I uh, I had her sort of tied off to the chair, but she just sat yeah. on the chair, and I would like run up to check on something or run up to uh, to grab something from the studio. And she was <laughs> just sitting out there manning the door. So yeah, it was really cool. 
So go to uh, laughingvikings.com slash comedy alley. Reminder though, we have a limit. There's a capacity of 20 seats. So the seating is very limited. We've had a few full shows where it was sold out uh, or where we've had to turn away people at the door. So make sure to reserve your seats at laughingvikings.com slash comedy alley. And if you're a friend of the podcast, you can use promo code friend. That'll get you 50% off your ticket. So you can grab a bunch of friends. We also offer those group birthday packages. So you can grab 90 of your friends plus you if you're the birthday person. And come on out here and celebrate in Comedy Alley. Yes. Uh, and we should mention we do have a special show coming up uh, this August 29th, Sunday, August 29th. This one's going to be a little different. This is our first afternoon show. And it's also sort of a, it's not solely comedy based. It's Free Flow Showcase, which are friends of mine that run these regular shows. They ran them a lot on Zoom and now they're uh, they're back to doing live shows. So this Free Flow, I can't, it's hard to say it, Free Flow, Free, free Flow. Free Flow Showcase and Open Mic. Uh, it's Annie Carter's birthday show. She's a, she's an artist herself as well. So they're celebrating her birthday as one of the producers of Free Flow Showcase. And uh, there's going to be comedy, spoken word, poetry, music, storytelling. And I'm always blown away by the by the talent. Like I'm always blown away by the acting and comedy talent in Toronto. But every Free Flow, I can't even say it, Free Flow. <laughs> Free flow. Is this like uh, it's one of those? This is like one of those voice and speech um, things. Free flow yeah. showcase. Free flow showcase. Free flow yeah. showcase. There we go. Um, I'm always blown away by the talent. Toronto has ridiculous talent. Their vocalists are amazing. Their storytellers are amazing. Their poets are amazing. So if you want to come to a show that's maybe a little deeper than our regular stand-up shows, these they're always very heart-centric. Uh, very arts focused and and there's a lot of love and good vibes. There's a little bit of snapping. You'll definitely hear some Ooh, some, yeah. some, uh, some beatnik snacking, a snap snapping. Uh, <laughs> and so the doors open at three and I think the show is looking to start at uh, three thirty. But the ticket link is under the same link. If you go to Comedy Alley, uh, sorry, Laughing Viking slap block. Let me try that again. I think I'm having a stroke. My, is it the heat? I think I have a heat stroke. I was at the beach earlier. Um, it is <laughs> laughingvikings.com slash comedy alley. It's right up on there the screen. Go. And go to August 29th. You'll see the link for Free Flow Showcase. And tickets are 25 bucks to come to that. But we've got a limit of 20 and there's already a handful sold. So those tickets are going to go fast. If you're any kind of artist, again, storytelling, poetry, comedy, music, it's amazing. And you might cry at some point, you might laugh at some point, and you'll probably leave with a bunch of new artist friends in the Toronto community. So check that out. Ooh, we got some uh, we got some people in the live stream. If you're watching on the live stream right now, let us know where you're watching from throughout the show. If you have questions for us about Laughing Vikings, Comedy Alley, or our guest, be sure to uh, pipe up. We'll bring you a part of the show. Adam Daniel Mazze says, it's none other than Lars the Good. Lars the Good and BK Broila. <laughs> hoo Yeah. All right. We got uh, Pacino, Adam Daniel Pacino on the line here. And then we've got uh, RI Broadcasting. Oh, that looks like a new lister. Hello, oh, RI. Hello. Oh, from Twitch. Good for you, Twitch. We yeah. Do Twitch. Tell all your Twitch friends to tune in. If you're an actor, comedian, artist, either in the Toronto area or internationally, and uh, you want to meet some new fun people. Yeah, good to see you there, uh, yeah. RI Broadcasting. Where are you watching from, RI Broadcasting? And what does the R and the I stand for? Mm -hmm. Let us know all those things. I like your logo, RB. It's yeah, I like the anchor. Is it RIB Broadcast? Or is the, maybe the B stands for Broadcasting? Oh, Rhode Island Broadcasting. All Ooh. right. All right. The roadies. Nice. the roadies are in town. All right. I think this is our first connection to Rhode Island. So um now you've got Welcome. A you've got a friend in Toronto. How's the island treating you? Rhode Island. I that's like a tiny is it is Rhode Island the smallest state? I think it is the smallest state. It's tiny. It's a tiny, tiny island. Is uh if global warming continues and sea levels rise, does Rhode Island stay above water or are you going to be underwater in 20 years not to go dark 
but uh, hopefully you're at the high level. Hope, I, I believe the yes it is is response to the smallest state. Uh, right. right. <laughs> I don't think it's a response to sinking right. in 20 years. <laughs> right. Well, hopefully your studio is in the high ground. Some won't make it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, well, hopefully you make it and hopefully your, your broadcast antennas are high on the building. So yeah. it's like, everybody to the roof. We're going to continue broadcasting while Rhode Island sinks. Yes. Nice. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, and be sure, as always, let us know if you have any questions. And uh, for everyone listening and or watching, make sure to follow us on all the podcast channels, whatever your favorite podcast platform is. And you can always watch replays of these on Facebook and on YouTube mm -hmm. and hit us up on Instagram at Laughing Vikings. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you that was a big weekend for me, aside from doing the Comedy Alley shows, I uh, enrolled. I did a weekend intensive with Roger Love, who's a renowned sort of Hollywood celebrity vocal coach. Uh, and I did his signature program uh, weekend intensive here called Voice of Success. That was all day Friday, all day Saturday, and all day Ooh. Sunday. And uh, it was amazing. He's For anyone who doesn't know Roger, he started out as a singer and musician himself when he was very young, started taking voice and speech lessons and coaching. And then quickly, I think as a 16-year-old, he came the assistant to the voice coach. I forget who his vo vocal coach was, but there were schedule conflicts. So his mentor and coach asked him, like, I've got clients, can you run the classes? So I think as like a 16, 17 year old guy, he was coaching like famous, well-known musicians, ended up being a backup vocalist or, or co-creator with a lot of them was on tour. Um, but he's famous for being the Hollywood vo vocal coach and voice and speech coach. He's coached, um, uh, Reese Witherspoon and uh, Joaquin Phoenix on the Johnny Cash movie uh, and um, Brad Cooper and Lady Gaga in the new Star is Born um, and who else? Um, a bunch of pop stars, um, Selena Gomez, uh, I know, maybe Miley Cyrus. You can look him up. Is Roger? I'm sure you'll find him. Roger, just type in Roger Love or Roger Love Voice of Success. Uh, he's kind of one of the go-to guys. Uh, so it was great. He he's an amazing speaker. He's an amazing vocal coach. He brings people on during the sessions and actually does these quick sort of 15 minute transformations where he gets people to talk to him and share what they feel is the issue with their voices. And he's 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 sort of like our acting coach, Tom, who is also a brilliant voice and speech coach. Um, but he sort of can instantly diagnose people and tweak them and instantly make them sound better. Um, and just boost their performance. So it was brilliant to see him do that kind of stuff. And the cool thing was there's a lot of overlap between what Roger was teaching us on the weekend and what Tom Todoroff teaches us uh, and all our other vocal uh, coaches teach us too. So um, it was just a great reminder to all actors out there and really anyone that you, it's, it's your voice, is your, it's your body and your voice. So, But more so it's voice and speech. And I know Tom always reminds us that like voice and speech, voice and speech, voice and speech, voice and speech. If you're not working on a voice and speech, then you're leaving a lot on the table and, and it's just your instrument. So it was a huge, huge reminder of that all weekend. So check out Roger Love. And as always, check out Tom Todoroff's class, the weekly Saturday class, which I had to miss this week. Uh, but Brandon, you were on there. It's always trans transformative. Oh, yeah. um, but you go to laughingvikings.com slash actors and you can get uh, a free session with Tom Todoroff. It's the weekend weekly Zoom international actors from all over the world. And there's always a renowned voice and speech coach doing an hour voice and speech class and text analysis and also scene study with Tom. So those are brilliant every week and you can get a freebie uh, and join for free. And you'll see us there every Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Come join us. Join us, Rhode <laughs> Island. Yeah, join us. Um, All right. Actually, I should actually announce too that uh, I was accepted to the conservatory, to the New York Conservatory, the Todoroff Conservatory. So I'll be starting that mid. Uh, when is that? Mid September. I'll be starting that. Mm -hmm. uh, what does Adam Daniel Mazai say? Bring that last comment up. Mazai says, uh, you refer you're, to, "You go. You're referring more to breathing, modulation, projection, etc. Not necessarily about accents and dialects, right? In respect of Roger's work, that's what you meant about Roger doing Johnny on the spot diagnosis of actors' voices. All of that, uh, Adam. He does. He does it all. Like he, um, yeah, it's breathing, modulation, projection, uh, a lot of the stuff that Tom talks about: pitch, rate, dynamics, inflection. 
but he works with people on accents. He works with people on dialects because a lot of it is just it's uh, structure, like speaking accents are in certain parts of the mouth and you do certain things with your musculature to, to hit certain accents and or impersonate certain people too. So he covers all of that stuff across the board. And it's not just singers. It's not just acting. A lot of his classes are geared now to people who are podcasting and people who are doing uh, Zooms and live webinars and all that kind of stuff. It's It was great. It's great. He's top of the line. He's got a ton of free resources out there and some free uh, courses if you want to sort of get an introduction to him. And then every, I think maybe a couple times a year, he does the, the weekend intensives that I just went through. Uh, great question. Sounds like my kind of cat. All right. Speaking about my kind of cat, uh, is Sandra in the studio there? Uh, well, let's play the clip and then we'll, we'll figure. Yeah, we'll figure it out. There, there she is. is. There yeah. she is. All right. <laughs> you want to set this clip up here? Uh, this is from Sandra's album. Uh, it is called Tomato Sauce Season. And we all know how Italians love their sauce. Ready? And roll in the clip. Okay, so roll. it's tomato sauce season. Okay? <laughs> It's one of the most anticipated times of the year, all right? Like we buy bushels of tomatoes, we put them through a tomato mill, we put them in, we boil them in a big cauldron like a bunch of witches. <laughs> oh yeah, and then we jar them and then we put them, put them in the cantina with, with the prosciutto, you know? <laughs> and the tomato mill is made, well my dad made it and the, the motor is from the first washing machine we ever had, so. <laughs> Very homemade, you know? <laughs> and we set up our production line like in the garage so that we don't get the house dirty. Isn't that fucked? Like, that's the dirtiest, usually the dirtiest place in the house, but not for Italians, all right? Like I even took the vacuum cleaner to it this year. Do you know how fucked that is? <laughs> While we were waiting for the juice to boil, I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vacuum this place, you know? And we owe this time of year to Christopher Columbus more than any other time, okay? <laughs> It's true, because before Christopher Columbus came to North America, there were no tomatoes in Italy, all right? I don't know if anybody knows this, but the tomato is native of North America. And when I, when I tell an Italian person this, it's like I told them they're adopted, you know? <laughs> like, they can't, they can't imagine a time before sauce, okay? It's inconceivable, you know? That's why they call it pomodoro, because they didn't have, which means golden apples, because they didn't have a name for it, okay? And, like, this time of year really gets my blood boiling, okay? Because... It's, it's, it's an event, tomato sauce making, that takes an entire day. And there's no way of getting out of it. There's like nothing, there's n hardly a circumstance that's eligible to get out of this event, okay? There's three things you can't get out of in my house. A wedding, a funeral, and tomato sauce, okay? It's true, it's true. Last year, my mother had heart surgery, okay? And it like turned our whole life upside down. Me and my sister basically had to become my mother and to make sure that my father's sketch would stay intact, okay? This fucking guy, honest to God, okay? The kind of routine he has for bed is insane, okay? Cream on his feet, eucalyptus on his back, drops in his eyes, okay? He's like the Julius Caesar of 905, right? It's true. And when he wants you to do something for him, he's really sneaky because he never explains what it is. He'll be like, uh, Sandra, can you come to the backyard for the monotes? So, so I go for a monotes, right? And he's like, okay. He goes, you see that contain? Fill them up. So I fill them up, right? And he goes, okay, now take that pump, pump them up, right? 30 minutes later, I'm fucking, I'm spraying the entire garden with homemade insecticide, okay? that he made with uh, dishwashing soap, all right? Like, I was so mad last summer, you can't even believe it. I thought I had to quit comedy. I thought I had to quit comedy and take care of this fucking family, okay? And like, so my mom, my mom's recovering in the hospital and the inevitable conversation about tomato sauce comes up and, uh, and my sister is talking like it's happening. I'm like, what is up with this fucking family? So I announce, I'm not making sauce this year. Holy shit, what a blow. What a blow to the family. They thought I was insane. And my mother, still with the tubes in, okay, is like, oh yeah, what are you gonna do when you wanna, when you wanna eat some sauce? Yeah, yeah, what, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I had no choice, I had to fucking make sauce, okay? For, it, unbelievable, seriously. 
Oh. All, all right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so pumped to have her on the show. She's a Canadian Comedy Award winner. She's done all the festivals in Canada. She's a regular here at Laughing Vikings and in Comedy Alley. She was the first president and helped start the Canadian Association of Stand-Up Comedians, which is responsible for helping to get comedy recognized as an art form in Canada and helping to get comedians paid and raise our level of standard standard of living here in Canada. You guys are going to love her. Please bring her in. Give it up for Sandy Bats. Sandy Battalini, everybody. Hey! Oh, she is. Look at that. Hey, hey, welcome. Welcome. How's it nice going? Good. You were able to take some time away from the sauce to be with us tonight? Yeah, well, the sauce is going to happen this weekend to coincidentally play that fucking clip. Wow. <laughs> Honest to God. Wow. Like, it better not be it better not be hot like today because I'm going to lose my shit. Let me see. What are they saying? <laughs> Friday. Friday is saying 23. Thank God. Oh, my God. This weather is fucking crazy. I, I was half expecting you to pick up your phone and be like, Friday, make sauce. Saturday, make sauce. <laughs> Sunday, make sauce. Right. Just <laughs> yeah, it's it's a one day event, but it's really two days because you got to buy the tomatoes and then you got to wash them. Listen, you can't, you can't, you can't. Yes, but then when you got to go, when you just need sauce, all you got to do is go get it in the fucking cantina or in you know here in a cupboard. It's like you can't. That's why you go through the pain. How much do you actually make? Like, what's the yield? Um, you know, like maybe a hundred jars. Some people do hundreds of them, but I don't think my mom is going to do that many this year. She said, I know every year is different. So she, she, uh, she still has, she still has some from last year. Is it like a signature secret blend? Like you have the way you do it or you like mix oh, it no. up every year or. Do we change it every year? Like, it's just the, it's just the, it's not like sauce. Like, you know, you, you, it's the base. I got you. It's just boiled tomato, um, uh, tomato juice right? The juice from the tomato mm -hmm. that like, you know, we put like olive oil and basil in and a couple other spices. And then when it's been boiled long enough, then you just put in the jar and it's, you know, you're canning them. So then you, that's like preserving them. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. And where are they available for sale? Oh, uh, no, <laughs> no Jim, chance. Jim Tooby wants to buy some. He says, How much he likes, he he, well, he says, I like the sauce, but I feel like he's referring to whiskey and vodka, to be honest with you. Now that I see that. Yeah, I think. Have you ever added? Do you add a little uh, booze? You make a boozy tomato? No, I've never done that. Well, there you go. What would you add? What's the what's the try this year, Sandra. What's an Italian liquor? I wouldn't fucking do that at all. I wouldn't even try it. <laughs> no, no, no. Vodka there's sauce. Some things, yeah. There's some things you have to be sacred over. You don't mess with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wine. Wine is good with sauce. Right. There you go. Yeah, definitely. Then I use wine. Yeah. But there I mean. You. I think no, there's there's actually marsala and then vodka pasta love, like you know that that's but that's like vodka on its own, not with tomato sauce. Right. Well maybe you could. I don't know. You know what? It's a whole other there is there well, is we'll have, we'll have to research it. We'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole world of possibilities. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, it's great to have you here, Sandra. Uh, we got a lot to talk about mm -hmm. career wise, and we always go back through talking to how people got started and what their future aspirations are, but the first segment is something that we call the one minute life story. That's where Brandon throws a minute up on a stopwatch for you. And you've got a minute to tell us Sandra Badalini's life story from birth right up until now. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, Sandra Badalini's one minute life story starting now. So I was born in Sudbury, Ontario on June 8th, 1971 to my parents, Attilio and Lena. Uh, and uh, I grew up there until I, I grew up there. I lived there until I was 25 and then moved to Toronto to do a marketing diploma degree. I, I, I stayed in Toronto, uh, Sudbury until I was 25. I did my master's and undergraduate in political science and history, came to Toronto, did a marketing thing. And then while one, one of my first jobs, I uh, did a, 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 I went to see the second city and then I heard about their classes. I took those classes. Then I became a comedian, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, should I have said more? My parents are immigrants from Italy, from Abruzzo, which is right underneath Rome. Um, you know, I have lots of family there. We got family over here. I feel like, I, I'm, I feel like, I, I mean, what else can I say? I live in Toronto. I like to eat food. <laughs> I don't know. 
Sandra Badalini's one minute life story. We, I mean, were, you, were you born in Sudbury or you yeah. just went to school in Sudbury? No, no, I was born there. Wow. Wow. I thought all Toronto Italians were born in Woodbridge for some reason. I thought that's where you were all native from. So you no, were born. Not, what, what was your dad and what were your parents doing there? Did your dad work in the mines or something? Yeah, like th that's the that's the older like that's when when Italian, Italians first came to Canada. That's where they went to the north. Right. Because they were they were right. you know in the late eighteen hundreds they were working on the railway like in the logging and the forestry and then yeah then eventually when they were building the the railroad um, through like well which is now what is Sudbury they discovered nickel and then that's where the mining started. So lots right. of lots of Italian immigrants. Uh, there, so yeah, my and then my parent, my father came post World War II, so there was another wave, obviously. Right, that's the bigger wave where you know a lot of people came here to Toronto, but my dad, but a lot of people, a lot of people went to Sudbury too because it was you know mine. And, right, yeah, there was work, right, and yeah, Sault like Ste. Marie as well. And Sault Ste. Marie, there's a really large hey, um, Thunder Bay, yeah. North Bay. Oh yeah, we're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Well, everywhere needs sauce, so we're uh, we're lucky we're lucky to have you guys. Yeah. Uh, look, we got some rave reviews about Italians here. Look at this. Lots of Italians are in Sudbury, and OG Italians. That's how they got to BC as well. Remember skateboarder Ross Rebegliati? He was yeah. Italian. Yeah. Nice. Is Dan Adam? Are you Italian? Mete? No, I don't. I don't know. Is he Italian? Yeah. Oh, RI yeah. Broadcasting. So. Yes, in Russia they do. Vodka definitely goes with uh, mining. <laughs> so you said you, uh, I think we actually briefly heard some of your uh, origin story through another podcast when we had Phil Lutzi on the show, but you want to take us back. How did you get into performing? Like what was your very first performance ever, whether this was as a child or, or as you started to, to get into things more professionally, how did you? Well, you when I was a kid, I, my, we, we danced, we took Russian style ballet, if you could believe it. And I was this chubby kid and I couldn't even do all the moves because I was like, my stomach's too full. <laughs> and but <laughs> and then I I, I I liked it, but then I was like, I'm an, I'm done with this. So the very my very first recital, I got stage fright and I didn't want to go on stage. And my mom's like, okay, she didn't force me. Can you imagine? And then it wasn't until I was in university and um with the Italian uh, his theater company there, because I took also Italian in university, and I um, did some plays, and they were all Italian plays, like playwrights from Italy. And and then when I moved to Toronto, I wanted to do some theater. Like I was like, oh, you know. And then I worked at this one branding place, and the woman that I worked for, her niece, I think she was a circus performer or street performer. Anyways, she was coming, and we she wanted to go to Second City. And my boss had told me about how like Second City had classes for um, business people to make them more agile, you know. And then when we went to go see a show, I lost my mind. And then I signed up for uh, their their you know their training center. Like I signed up, and then I took like a year, so like level A to E. So the at, at the end of two thousand and at the end of two thousand, um, I had my first show. And then when I stepped on stage, I was like, Ooh. and that was it. So I started doing like, and then I, I started like doing like, and then I went to conservatory, but then at that point in two, in 2001, I started doing these variety shows with a couple of people that I was in, uh, take, had taken classes with. And it was called, so you want to be a comedy? Cause that's what my dad said to me at one point. He's like, so you want to be a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so then I did, so then we did those shows and I just started performing. And then I tried stand up for the first time at the Laugh Resort and it, it was, it didn't go so great. Like I told this story that was like, it was more of a, I just told the story. And then the second time I did a show, I did it at Yuck Yucks and it was still one of the best shows I ever did. So it was like, I talked about my dad. And I mean, I talked about other things, but like, it was just like one of those nights. I remember Jack, who also, you know, Jack Norman was like, when I got off stage, he's like, and ladies and gentlemen, that's her second time doing comedy. And I was like, and it was just a special night. I can still see people and like stuff. So yeah, that's my origin. And you were hooked. You 
just got addicted, yeah. Yeah, and then I, I tried, you know, I auditioned for the touring company of Second City and they hired me for Tony and Tina's Wedding, which is where I met Phil. Right, yeah, because Phil, you were doing the show and Phil was in the audience? Like, it, yeah. was, a cor it was a corporate show, I think, and he said no. he was in the audience? It was just oh, one, it was a regular just, show, just a but he put show. people that he worked with there. Gotcha, yeah. right. Yeah, for those who don't know, Phil Luzzi is a fantastic actor and comedian. We've had him on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he met you initially, and then you guys went on. To, you were doing your what? Sal and Sandy's wedding? Is that what it was called? No, Tony and Tina's. No, Tony, Tony, Tony. Oh yeah, what's Sal yeah. and Sandy? Is that the something Sal else? Sal and Sandy was the show we did. Our show. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony. Yeah, and those Tony. Tony created. Right. Yeah, Tony and right, Tina's right. wedding is where we met. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Throughout the years, I've always found uh, more and more people that have worked on Tony and Tina's wedding. Because yeah. when I grew, when I was growing up, my mom could not stop talking about Tony and Tina's wedding. She loved that show. She <laughs> went to see it three or four times, I believe. Wow! And I know, like people loved it. They came all the time. They came, she she talked about it incessantly, and like she would always be like, "Oh, it was so funny this time. They came and sat down with us. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, Brandon, you need to start doing shows like these. Oh my god, what is this?" Yeah, and you know, like it was like we were in the Second City building and Second City looked down on it, but it really was paying the rent for the building. You know, like the people on the main stage, like we were literally, a, the, you know, the second class show. Like we came up through the back stairs, you know, like we were, but it was a, I mean, it was such a funny show. Like I did it for almost two years. Like there were people there that had been doing it for six years, which by the time I decided to leave, just that thought was made me nuts because I was like, I can't listen to this fucking sh song anymore. I can't do this anymore. So yeah. Can't How many shows do you over and over and over again? What's that? You can't go to the same wedding over and over and over. I know. And do that same show all the time. Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> if you were to guesstimate how many shows, how many performances did you do? Well, that show ran, that show ran I think every day, or there wasn't a show Sunday. For a time, there were two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, and all week. So I think there was one day that we didn't work, one day a week. So I don't know. That's a good chunk. That's a good yeah. chunk. Yeah. yeah. And they what? always underpaid, and they, I still remember, like, I'm like, sec this building is going down when. I remember walking down one of the hall. Like this was at after SARS, coincidentally, or during SARS, or whatever it happened then. But like, I'm walking through the hallway, and like, there's like, um, it just was dirty, and like, you couldn't. I can't remember what was. Oh, I couldn't order a pencil. Like I wasn't able to get supplies for something, and I was like, oh, okay, this is. I've been part of sinking ships before. <laughs> this is a ship. Like they wouldn't green light the budget for pencils, you mean? Yeah, like you couldn't, yeah. It was like everything had just gotten, yeah, it was crazy. Wow. We've exhausted our pencil budget. <laughs> yeah. Like, you so, know, that whole thing, when that whole thing came out with Second City, you know, with the, like the racism that happened there, remember that was like during the last year and a half? Like nobody's brought up, you know, the Tony and Tina's wedding and how that show was treated there. Like people haven't brought that up, but that was like, yeah, there was, there was a lot of mistreatment for sure. Like it was so fun. And I mean, it, look, I met Phil, like the shit that we used to do, but like truly, you know, it was right. Yeah. yeah. Was that your first paid gig, Sandra? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think yes, because then I got an agent. She had come to the show, uh, Stephen Mann's sister. Mm -hmm. And so she came to the show and signed up a bunch of people. So it was like, yeah, that was my first, was she my first agent? No, I think I had another agent before her, but I don't remember her name. Cause it was like, it was terrible. You know, those agents where you're like, they, they, don't, they just take on like, like I don't, I had to, had no gigs up until, you know what I mean? Right. Like where you pay them for headshots basically. And yeah, and that's the deal. Yeah. Um, hmm. What was your first, you remember your first paid stand up gig? No. 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 It was a while ago, was it? Yeah. yeah. No idea. <laughs> um, 
So tell us what do we got next uh, lined up there, Brandon? What is the most interesting place that you've performed, Sandra? Now this could be something that has negatively happened and that you can never forget it or something that's uh, a very positive experience for you, but it was just a weird atmosphere and weird venue. Well, I think the most interesting place was uh, Zero Gravity Circus, like the circus that's now called the Redwood at Gerard and Greenwood. Yeah, that was, that was, so I'm also a clown. So yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I did stand up, but the, when I was taking, so when I was in Tony and Tina's wedding is when I um, studied clown because like, you know, I had a gig at night. So during the day for five weeks, I studied like uh, pachinko clown and like, oh my God, it was like, it was honestly, because Toronto was a real center of clown in the world. So there were people here from all over the world and it was just like one of those, it was so amazing. So anyways, I, you know, almost from the get go, when I started producing shows, like, and started going, like going on the scene, you know, I'd see Mark Andrada and he would do clown turns like in non clown venues. He was kind of the only person doing that. But then, but then I was like, I started going to clown shows. And I'm like, this is the best shit in the world. <laughs> and I studied clown and then zero gravity. I think they started doing, or it was called Lunacy Cabaret. They started doing shows at zero gravity or the center of gravity rather. Zero Gravity was the agency because I was also on their roster. Um, and uh, yeah, and then there was a monthly cabaret show there and it was nuts, like nuts. I couldn't, like to explain it is, is just crazy. It was like, it was like, you know, it's satire and circus. So that you'd see people like, you know, juggling chainsaws and doing like wildfire routines and burlesque. And then we would do like, crazy clown and, and and like it was wild like and the parties bro i like i never i never knew that all those drugs existed <laughs> like, people would do so many drugs that they would collapse on the ground and i'm like this is fucked so yeah that place is and i'm going to be filming uh my stand-up special there on september 25th so it's called, yeah. haunted, it's called haunted house and uh it's yeah i'm gonna have two we're doing one at Seven and nine thirty, and then and then recording an album at the same time. Amazing, nice. amazing. That's say the date again, September twenty fifth. September twenty fifth at the Redwood Theater, which is yes. that's um, Gerard and like Greenwood ish, right? Yeah, it's yeah. exactly there. Yeah. It's just yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah, so it's just a beautiful. It's a beautiful space too. I've done a. I did. A, uh, I haven't done stand up there, but I did a live sort of immersive interactive theater show. That was. Uh, it was. It's called the Movie Experience. And we did a live version of Princess Bride. And it's sort of a multimedia thing where they show the movie, but then at certain breaks in the movie, the, the movie would stop. And then the actual live actors would all walk on stage and we would reenact like verbatim to the beat, to the moment, exactly how the movie was. So it was this cool, immersive, interactive, and they built set pieces that were just like in the movie. It was super cool. That space is beautiful. And the um, the zero gravity thing, that's the, uh, what do they call them? Like silks from the roof yeah. where people are twirling and climbing up yeah. there. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Toronto has too much talent, I think. Too much talent. Yeah, it's amazing. Like the, these un, these scenes that are like the history is is wild. So Adam, we Adam says uh, he saw Ghostbusters. Yeah, that was the next show after um, Princess Bride. They did Ghostbusters there as well, which is super cool. I think that we also have a question, Sandra. Um, is there any red lines for you in comedy? So is there any lines that you don't want to cross or any lines that you feel are forbidden? No. Uh, like on subject matter? No. I mean, if if there's something to talk about, yeah. I, I uh, Yeah, there's not really... No. No. Sweet. I mean, yeah, I don't know what those lines are because I don't know what, it, you know, what do they mean by a red line? Right. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's the kind of thing if, if, if you talk about anything, if it ends up being funny, if you try to talk about something that's horrible yeah. and, it, and it ends up not being funny, then you kind of failed Nothing there. But, sacred. I mean, I think if yeah. you do it with hatred, then that's the problem. So right. yeah, that's a red line, hatred. Right. You know? Right, right. Yeah, the point needs to be I'm talking about this to entertain and, and to make yeah. light of something and, and to get a laugh and unite a crowd and make sure everyone has a fun time. Yeah, or make, you know, or, or make, you know, make a point, satire, political comment, you know, release, right? Mm -hmm. right. 
Now, Sandra, is there any dream projects that you have been wanting to create and that you've been aspiring to work towards for the past couple of years? Or is this comedy show or the album that you're working on now the thing that you've been most excited for? No, like that, I mean, I'm totally excited. I wanted to do this a couple of years ago, but then obviously everything um, everything went nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, so no, like I, I have like, you know, I've been working on a screenplay. I've got like several TV concepts that, you know, I have been working on. Um, there's one concept in, partic in particular, the, it's, a, it's a concept about this, um, that theater and, you know, the one I just mentioned. Um, I'm, yeah, that's something that I would love to see. I mean, I'd love them all to happen. Let's be honest. Yeah. I'd love to, you know, dream project would be, yeah. Write it, write, create a TV show, make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, many of those. Well, Sandra, I'll tell you when, when laughing Vikings gets to the point where we're like Netflix, you'll be one of the people that we just green light. We'll be like, give, uh, let's, is that let's, what you're doing? let's, let's give Sandra $50 million to make uh, six features, five stand up specials and a sitcom and a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> is that, is that the trajectory of laughing Vikings? Is that what, is that what you guys want to be? My, my goal personally for laughing Vikings is to get it like happy Madison productions or Kevin Hart's heartbeat productions where I'm producing things That's and true. casting my friends and, green lighting their projects or co-producing their projects. I think that's the, the <laughs> ultimate goal. Like every actor or comedian at some point they get to the, the level where they're not auditioning. They're just, they're writing and creating and or producing and or directing their own projects. And I think that's where, where I would like to be. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And you'll be on the list. So just, just, I'm so, I've, I've got so many pitches you can't even, but you know, the problem in Canada is they don't make a lot of stuff. So right. I know that that's changing and, uh, and, but um, you know, it's been, it's been, yeah, it's difficult here. Has can, you, been can you talk a little bit about that cast, which was Canadian Association of Stand-Up Comedians, how that came about and, and maybe to the, to the lay people who aren't in the industry, just sort of what that was all about and, and what you, why it was organized, the results and, and sort of what you were fighting for there and, and what's, um, still, what's still happening. So in 2015, no, 2016, yeah, I wrote a letter to the prime minister, you know, called just a little reciprocity. And it was like, it was just like an open letter to say, hey bro, we don't get uh, funding we can't cross the border easily at all. Cause it was just like, I wrote this letter and you know, I, it took me months to write, you know, I needed to do all the research, right? My history background. And I just wanted to really know like, what, what are the rules? Like what, what do Americans need when they come here? And what are the, you know, so then I just started this crazy road of, oh my God, insanity. So I wrote this letter I put it out there and then it went viral, you know, and, and people were like, you know, I was so nervous, but I was like, I couldn't list like the, 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 these, um, um, what's the word? Laments or um, grievances were, I'd heard from the, when I first started comedy and it just seemed so unfair. I'm like, something's really wrong here, you know? And so I wrote that letter, it went viral. And then, you know, then I was on a couple of shows. I like, you know, t radio shows, and then I met with my MP and, you know, I said, Hey, if you, you know, see Justin, can you send him this letter? And she's like, sure, but, uh, I want to learn more. Can we have a coffee? So we sat down and then, you know, she had mentioned something. She's like, look, I know that there is stand up in Canada and Toronto, but I, I, I don't know anything else. Like I don't know anything about it. So, uh, that also made me realize too, like how nobody knew what was going on. Like the world doesn't know because actors, Comedians, we don't want to. We don't want to be like I don't I, to complain or call out uh, the industry because we're afraid we're going to lose work. But guess what? We the, everything disappeared. The industry disappeared because we stayed silent, which is currently what's happening on the planet. People stay silent, and then there's a fire at their door, and they're like, "Oh fuck, I should have done something." So, anyways, I didn't intend for any of this. Do you think like I would intend to start an association? Are you? <laughs> so then when the letter, like, so then all this started happening, and then. You know, we met, I met with a couple of like all sorts of people and like met with some politicians and they were like, you know, start a, start an association because this way, like, it's not just Sandra Badalini, uh, lobbying and it, you know, and basically we, like we, when we, when we launched in 2017, 
I'm just lighting an incense. Ah. Wow, that looks really great. <laughs> I'm also high. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire. Wait, what about my third that, eye? Wait, that's, that's the episode Woo! screen screenshot right there. That's the episode thumbnail, Brandon. <laughs> oh my god, how did I and, and I'm high too. I was gonna do it to you guys, but it's not gonna show. How hilarious. I thought I could do it to you guys. Yeah, that's not no. how uh, the internet works. You can't pass fire through the <laughs> <Yeah>. camera. <laughs> I know. But like whatever, I'm high, I should be able to. <laughs> So in February 2017, we formed the like we launched the association, and started and we launched a petition to have comedy recognized as an art form. So uh, it, it, it's like an e petition. So it's a it's done through the government, which is what like Julie DeBruce and my MP, you know, she helped all that along. And then the reason we did an e petition instead of you know one of those um, uh, other petitions, what are they called? Uh, the like the ones that have are on those sites, you know, those famous petition websites. Right, right. Yeah, the reason we didn't do that was because this one would be tabled in the House of Commons. And that's what happened, and it got a standing ovation, and it was like, it's like, anyways, all these things. And then we we, we hired these lobbyists. They reached out to us. This was 2017. NAFTA was being renegotiated. They told us, look, labor mobility is a top priority for the Canadian team. So uh, we think we can help you. And I lobbied my executive to hire these lobbyists and we had no money. And the lobbyists were like, it's fine. You guys can pay us later. But I knew we were going to get money. Like everything about this whole thing, it's like a psychic. It's like, I, I always just see it. It's just like, and I, and I, and I don't doubt it ever. It's like, I see it all. I met with people. I met with this person, Zach Layton, who's been like an amazing ally from the music, like music lobby side, but music production side. He's done everything. He's amazing. And it was like meeting with a couple of music people there. They've been some of our, they've been our biggest allies, like, and, you know, supporters and like basically the way that music, uh, the, the lobbying that music did in Canada, like, and the music industry is the, is the trajectory that, that we've been on, you know? And, um, yeah. And then for five years, I, I, that's, I, I lobbied, like I, it was crazy, like full time almost, you know, sometimes. Um, but it was the, it was what I did. I was the president, the spokesperson, you know, the executive director, if you will. And then, you know, I served like a four year term and then I just stepped down last December, but I still work on a couple of issues. Um, but yeah. Huge. Yeah. And they also, you uh, were part of a documentary sort of about all this called the mayor of comedy. What's the website yeah, yeah. that people would go to? Mayorcomedy.com. Mayor like, yeah, I, I made, I made like, I made that documentary with like the filmmaker is Matt Kelly, who's like a close friend. He's amazing. So I helped to make that. Yeah. Mayorcomedy.com. Yeah. Right. Uh, and one, one thing that I should mention, like it was amazing that you did that. I, I became a member very quickly. And one of the biggest things that happened is, uh, I don't know, I guess it was a couple of years ago, maybe a year pre COVID, um, there was a deal between Sirius XM and Just for Laughs that was essentially going to result in a ton of com Canadian comics losing their monthly streaming royalty checks. Um, and you were able to sort of mobilize cast yeah. and mobilize all these comedian voices to fight that. And you were able to bring Sirius and Just for Laughs together to the table. And it ended up sort of saving thousands and thousands of royalty dollars, which now you think of it in retrospect for some of those comedians that royalty money was was paying their mortgages and putting food on their table for their kids had that not happened and then COVID happened there would have been people losing their homes more so than than maybe what happened and it yeah. would have been because because every comedian lost all of their live gigs so if you were a, an older kind of road dog type comedian where their money was on the road and the streaming royalties and not much in between they would have been wiped out at that point. So kudos to you and thank you for, for all that. that. That was, in, oh in retrospect, God. that was huge. Yeah, because like when you see that during the pandemic, it's like, or during the pandemic, during this last year and a half, um, you know, we didn't, because we don't qualify for grants, you know, there was no, there was no access there. You know, like musicians and other artists, all they had to do was just like, you know, apply. And then they, they got like, they got relief money. 
and we lobbied aggressively. Like that was the biggest, yeah, that's, that's where the documentary is. That was the biggest lobby effort. And it was so frustrating in the end when they were like, yeah, no, we're not going to, we're not going to extend any of this, you know, um, relief money on top. You know what I mean? Like the, the, what did they call it? Well, it's kind of relief. I can't remember exactly bailout, not a bailout, but whatever. Right. And you know, we lobby them like, Hey, some of can, some of that go to comedians and venues. And it just basically went to a lot of the same people that get money. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but like apparently this fall Canada council is supposed to announce a new structure and we, you know, we have it on very good word. Uh, like that's something significant will change, but we'll see. I, I've loved, I've like met with, you know, many departments that, you know, department of finance of immigration of, you know, the department of heritage, uh, foreign affairs and Canada council for the arts. And I like them the least, like I didn't like them. And I always right. say that, and maybe that, but I'm like, there, there's a real prejudice to what we do and then not an understanding of it, but like, that's fine. You know, when you, Again, we didn't speak about up about it. Nobody knew what our issues were. Mm -hmm. And that's always speak up. Like, you know, it's not something that I, you know, it's not like something that I chose to do to like, I mean, I chose to, I did choose obviously all the time to keep working on it, but it was something that came through me. And it was like, you know, when I stepped down, people are like, why did you step down? Like, did something happen? I was like, no, it's time for me to move on. Like right. this is all of ours. You know, it just, it, I just started it. So what? Like, let's move, let's, you know, it is our right to, uh, um, uh, what's the word? Lobby for ourselves, negotiate for ourselves. All other workers do this. And, you know, the last, you know, maybe the last 50 years, but in the last 10, 20 years, I mean, workers' rights have evaporated. And then now you see in the last year and a half, who's who fucking profited the most? These like these corporations that were allowed to. Well, that's like we we get like sure they really have you know came after us like hounds. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but now it's time for us to get it back. Love it. And for never for never to go back the way it was. You might have to graduate from mayor of comedy to prime minister of comedy at some point. Uh, but your um, your successor, uh, the new president of uh, Cask, is Monty Scott, who's yes. an amazing comedian and just the best guy. Everybody loves Monty. So yeah. um, the organization is in great hands. And I know you're still very much a part of that as well, too. So yeah. thank you for everything you've done there. And I'm sure the future will, will continue to improve things. Uh, we've got, uh, I think we're coming down to the uh, wire here on a final question. We always like to ask people, um, what advice were you to give to either aspiring uh, comedians, actors, or people maybe who are are currently an actor or a comedian, but what advice would you give to them about either getting started or getting to the next level? I mean, just do it, do it until, do it until you don't like it. And so if you always like it, just do it. You know, don't do it for anything other than the art and the joy you know, cause I think like, I think, you know, what the last year and a half is showing us is just like the illusion of what we were all kind of going after. And like, what is that? You know, in Canada, you know, we have like a very limited structure to, um, you know, cr to, to create anything bigger. Uh, so, so a lot of people, you know, it, it really debilitates people, but it's like, but it's like, it doesn't matter if this is your art, this is your voice, just tell your stories. If you're, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're compelled to and, and have no expectation, I know that sounds insane, but like, it is really it. Mm -hmm. Love it. I love it. Great. Tell your story. All right, Brandon, you got something for us to wrap up? Yeah, I do have a quote to inspire our week, which comes from Tom Todoroff. Uh, love takes time. Love takes makes time give time for yourself give time for your family give time for the people that love you don't let other people take your time away from you don't don't dwell on the things that you can't control don't let other people bring you down don't let your own mind bring you down because i know that happens to me a lot let yourself be who you are 
Take the time to really find the things that you love in life, because the more that you find that, the more that you fight for that, the more, the happier you'll be. Boom. Couldn't have said it better. Sha -la -la -la. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, I mean, love takes time and love makes time. When you really love something, you put in time for it. And, and, mm -hmm. um, and the more time you put into something, the more your love can grow uh, yeah. from that time as well, whether it's uh, comedy or tomato sauce. <laughs> what the exactly. world needs now is love, love sweet, sweet love. love. It's the only oh, thing that there's just too little love. love. What the world? Yes, beautiful. I know, it's true. Honestly, if you listen to all the gurus, the only revolution that's going to happen is of the spirit of love. Because what else have we got? What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to invent another nuclear bomb. Get the fuck out of here. I don't <laughs> want to hear these fucking people anymore. Yippity yap. Oh, I right. want to scare you. Fuck you. Right, right. Your fear is is not real. Yeah. Yeah, I see I see that in uh, like newspaper articles or like on online, not newspaper, but online where it's like, they'll talk about a country who just ordered 50 new nuclear submarines or a new battleship or something. I'm like, well, that, that in, and of, in and of itself should be illegal. Like you, yeah. like, why are you ordering nuclear missiles and ships? Like that's clearly the wrong direction. That's a, whole, that's a whole other episode, I think. So, imagine yeah. you don't even have to make it illegal because nobody wants them anymore. Right, yeah, it's just like, why would we even waste billions of dollars on that? That's so- Like with the ego, the ego to create something to like destroy things. That's fucked. So I know, yes. yeah, I know well, people believe we need these things, but. Not really. No. No. We yeah. just need love. Yes. Sweet, sweet love. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, be sure to follow Sandra Badalini everywhere at Sandra Badalini on mm -hmm. uh, Instagram. You can check out mayorofcomedy.com and uh, certainly go to laughingvikings.com for Comedy Alley tickets. If you're an actor, you can go to laughingvikings.com slash gift and we will give you your first self-tape session on the house here at the studio. Uh, if you're in Toronto, or if you're not in Toronto, we do them remotely via Zoom too. So if you're an actor anywhere in the world, we can hook up and uh, help you with that. Uh, and follow us on all the podcast places. All right, mm -hmm. good night, everyone. That was episode 47, we'll see you next Monday. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, goodbye, goodbye, thanks, Sandra.